Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about variable intake manifolds as well as intake manifold tuning. And the cool thing about this is even with naturally aspirated engines you can kind of have this supercharging effect uh, depending on your intake manifold tuning. And the way this works is as follows. So you've got your intake here, your air is going to come in, it'll pass through the throttle body and then start to go down this intake runner right here. Now your engine of course is on the intake stroke for this cylinder so it's pulling in that air causing this air to move at a high velocity. Now right before that air gets into that cylinder your valve closes so as a result of that, that air still has its velocity in this direction and it piles up and builds up in this lower section of the runner and it builds up in pressure. So now that pressure wave is going to go back it's going to go all the way back up to the plenum, hit that plenum, and then start to come back down. Now, of course, the number of times that it does this, it'll start to dissipate out, and you'll no longer have this effect, but you're going to have this pressure wave bouncing back and forth. So it hits the back of the plenum, starts to come back down, and if you time your intake right, and you have that open up right as that pressure wave's coming in, you can force in a little extra air into that cylinder, meaning you're going to make more power. And so this effect is only going to be useful for a very narrow RPM, because any time that timing is off, of course, then it's not going to give that supercharging effect, it's not going to push in that extra air. So the reason why you would want to use a variable intake manifold is you can create another range at which this is going to be useful. So you're just going to have this one peak here. We've got this little simplified uh, plot to so show the supercharging effect and where it's at its most effective point. It would actually have some smaller peaks in there uh, depending on how many times it's bounced back and forth, but just a simplified version. It's going to be most effective at 1 RPM. Now if you shorten the length of these runners, it's going to push that over into the higher RPM range because you're going to have less time for that uh, to bounce back and forth, that air to bounce back and forth. So if you have both of these available, you can see you've got these two peaks here and you have you know, a better operating condition for your engine where you can maintain power across a broader RPM range. Okay, so what, you know, what do you want to do with your intake manifold itself? Well, at lower RPM, it's better to have a longer runner because you need more time for that pressure to go uh, back to the plenum and then come back down. As you get into the higher RPM, you know, let's say you're at 3,000 here, 6,000 here, you're going to have half the time because you've got double the RPM for that pressure wave to hit the back of the plenum and come back down. So have the time, half the distance, and that means you'll be able to get that same benefit. So shorter is going to be better at higher RPM. Now, narrow is also better for lower RPM because it means you're going to have air moving at a higher velocity. Moving at a higher velocity, it'll become more turbulent, mix with the fuel better, better air-fuel mixture, and you'll have, you know, a better combustion. With wider, however, uh, at higher RPM, you're going to want it to be wider, and that's just because of flow. You don't want it to restrict how much air can pass through. Wider means higher mass flow uh, capacity, and so you, you don't restrict it at higher engine RPMs, and you can create more power with more flow. So how is this done with an intake manifold? Well, I've got two different examples here, uh, different ways of going about it. So here you can see a low RPM, we're looking at blue, and you're going to have this little valve right here. So here's our intake manifold, and then higher RPM is going to be in red. So at a low RPM with this particular intake manifold set up, you're going to have this butterfly valve right here, which is going to close off this lower portion. So all the air is forced to go through this long, narrow section so we can get a high velocity, and you can make decent power at low RPM. Then once you get to high RPM, this valve right here opens up and you can use all of this to bring in air, uh, so much more air and you know it's going to have a longer or shorter distance uh, right here. Now this one doesn't change distance as much as some of the other methods. So this for example right here, you can have the air come in uh, at low RPM, it'll be closed off and has to travel back all the way around before it can get into the engine or at a high RPM, it can just go this really short shot right here and get in. So that'll give you that more effective uh, high supercharging effect at a higher RPM versus something like this. But this one, you know you're going to change your flow characteristics. So both of them are going to give you a benefit uh, of a wider power band um, depending on, you know, how the airflow is and what RPM you're at and, you know, your throttle and things like that. Uh, so both of them giving you a benefit. And just two of the examples out there, of course, there's plenty of ways that you could derive a system like this to change uh, both the width or uh, the distance at which the air has to travel before it gets into your cylinder. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below.